Welcome to Players Only. It's an eight-game night. Yes, it's a new night, but it's the same cast and crew and the same <laughs> professionals around us helping us look good. So don't worry. Hopefully, we'll be consistent with you. I'm Chris Webber, Isaiah Thomas, and I'm in Kevin McHale at the end. Guys, we have a really good game tonight. We got the Timberwolves, and uh, they're a little bit under my expectation, 19 and 21. I thought they'd be probably five, six games above 500 at this time. But they're going up against the number two team and maybe the biggest surprise for me, uh, one of the biggest surprises in the NBA, the OKC Thunder, especially on the defensive end, I think Coach uh, Donovan has done a great job. But we can't ignore the news of Coach Thibodeau um, being fired in the regular season. Uh, overall, he's 352 and 246, so he has an above winning record uh, overall in the NBA. But uh, there in uh, the Wolves, uh, he was under, uh, under uh, that 500 mark. Let's start with you, Kev. When you... Uh, understanding what's going on with the Timberwolves, did you kind of see this move of the firing of Coach Thibodeau coming, or was it a surprise, or, or how did you? I, I think it all happened at training camp with the whole thing with Butler. That was the start of it. You know, Butler came out right after the season, which I didn't know he knew about, and said, I want to be gone. Like a week after, didn't. Butler doesn't fly back with the team after they lose in the playoffs, which is usually a sign mm -hmm. of something bad's happening. Because, you know, everybody rides together that last, and you start talking about next year mm -hmm. and you know, getting better. He doesn't even come with them. Tells Tibbs he wants to go. And none of that gets out. I'm not even sure how many people inside the organization knew that. Doesn't show up for training camp. Um, comes in at late in training camp. Has a practice where he you know, curses out everybody and yeah. kind of just you know starts going off. And I think that was it right there. I, I just think at that time, I know if I'm on the team and a guy does that, if I don't say something, I'm sure surely hoping the coach says, "Hey man, come on. This, this is practice. These are your teammates. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. stopping this thing, man. This is about us together." And I just thought that was it. Now it took a little longer. It, it's you know it's boiling up, Chris, when you get dropped after you win a game by 22 points, and yeah. they won two games yeah. in a row. So this was in the this was yeah. gonna happen yeah. one way or the other. But I think it happened again, like I said last year with with Butler at the end of the playoffs, going all the way up through training camp. Yeah, you know, so much has been made and, and watching TV this week and hearing undertones of journalism, it, it seems that uh, players have been accused to not say what's on their mind about teammates or, and it's in other sports, football mostly, but here, uh, listening to you guys, you've been pretty critical, I think, of good friends, of guys that have been in the same position of you because it's not personal when we're talking about sports. And both of you guys have been coaches. Both of you, I'm not sure, have been relieved of duties or, or oh, yeah. quit those duties and, you, you know, how could he have stopped the bleeding, Zeke? And where do you go from, you know, right now? Right now, you have young Saunders, the, the coach of uh, the son of Coach Flip mm -hmm. Saunders, 32 years old. Uh, first of all, I know he's a great basketball mind as much as he's been around the game. But being so young, taking this young team in a new direction, how do you sort through all this if you're in the midst of this storm right now as management for Minnesota Timberwolves? The, the first thing, uh, you know, management, you know, as Kevin said, they – they made a bet on Butler. Tibbs and Butler made a bet together and lost, right? So they, that relationship got fractured. Once that relationship was fractured, now there's, a fra there's an organizational fracture. And when you have an organizational fracture with management, players, coaches, now somebody's got to bring everybody back together. And normally that, that's going to be the coach. So, you know, Saunders has, he has a big job ahead of him. Mm -hmm these next two to three days. Because right now, these next two to three days, so much stuff could spin out of control, and it can get out of control quickly. So, Zeke, let's be, I hate yeah. to cut you off, but both guys, I mean, first of all, I love the fact that his son has a role, and I know, again, he's yeah. a basketball mind. But with the lack of experience, with the young team, I'm wondering how that plays, and, and I'll give you a better example. To me, this was the first time maybe Coach Popovich was in a situation where he had to recruit one of his own free agents. Mm -hmm. And when you understand maybe people don't look at us like I thought they do on the inside or how they sh should, maybe you end up losing in that situation. What does he go on right now to say, this is how you hold it together? Is he calling your mentors? Is he talking to the players? If you're him, what do you do with that lack of experience? He, he's got to lean on the players. Now, now it really becomes... Towns and Wiggins who really have to steady the ship and bring everybody together because because Chris and Kevin you, you both know this right you know the the product and the performance out on the floor that's what's going to be judged yeah mm -hmm. the X's and O's is not going to be judged as much as the product out on the floor in terms of how you play 
how you execute, how hard you play, so forth and so on. And that really comes down to the players. So the only people who are really going to get them out of this situation are the 12 guys that got on the uniform. Right. <laughs> you and, know? Yeah, the and, guys, and when the 12 guys who got on the yeah. uniform, Towns and, and, and Cat, they got, they got to lead it. And, you know, you look at the guys. Ryan Saunders is 32 years old. He looks at those guys and say, look, I'm one of you. I mean, let, let, yeah. let's do this together. together yeah. You know, and I think the biggest thing you got to do, because I've taken over in the middle of the season a couple times, you got to go from trying to put your stuff in. Because like I said, we were talking about the Zeke earlier. Yeah. Try to put a whole new offense in yesterday. <laughs> see how it looks tonight. Yeah. Yeah. you got to take Tibbs' stuff. <clears throat> if you're Ryan Saunders and say, okay, I like these three sets. I don't like these sets. And you guys take Tibbs' stuff and, and, and use that tonight and slowly bring your stuff in. But I think also if, if Ryan is smart and is going to talk to you guys, I'm going to go to the top players if I'm him and saying, okay, what sets do you like? Cat, when you need a hoop, what do you want me to yes. run from you? Uh, Wiggs, when you're not rolling, what gets you rolling? I, and, and then I tell you what, I'm running that stuff for my top players. Yeah. And I'm going to get my top players on board, fighting hard, and then they'll bring everybody with them. But it, it, it's tough. I guarantee you Ryan hasn't slept in two days since they told yeah. him his head coach. Yeah. His mind's spinning. The game's getting ready to start. He's got 700 things going through his brain. And I told you, Zeke, just hope it doesn't come down to the last 35 seconds in a tie <laughs> game. Yeah. Ryan will be like, oh, yeah. man, because, you know, you have so much stuff you have yeah. to do. But once you do it and you get comfortable with basketball, like I told you, I, I wanted to go for two-for-ones late in the game. So, I mean, if there was 38 seconds to go with tie game, I was saying, guys, we're going to get a shot up in the next four or five yeah. seconds. Yeah. I mean, we, we did that in the first quarter. We did that in the second quarter. did it in the third quarter. We're going to do it in the fourth quarter. Let's get two-for-one. And you, so you got to kind of get your style of coaching, put it in there. But I know right now, young guy, I've known him since he's just been a little boy, Ryan. Yeah. And, uh, I know he's nervous as I'll get well, up right I'll tell you what, he's earned this moment. I'm sure his father and his family made him earn this moment. And he has a guy that's very reliable. When you look at Carl Anthony Towns, he's averaging uh, 30 points on 53 percent uh, field goal uh, in his last six games. So I can see that. And one thing you said, Kevin, I like. When you go to a player and you say, Isaiah, what play do you like for you? You're really giving them responsibility. Because mm -hmm. you can't look at me and say, well, coach, I'm not in my zone. I'm not in the place. I'm expecting you now to be successful every single time at this mark. And so uh, it'll be fun to, to see how he and this group uh, gets through this game. So players only, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there, even though this is this is, you know, our guy here. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't want to lose you or anything. <laughs> but, you know, your history with with Minnesota, your history, with the family, with the organization. You got Sam Mitchell sitting out there. I asked him this today. Is he yeah, walking I, in? I asked him the same. I, Talk to him. I, I'm just Sam saying there's, 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 a lot, there's a lot of names yes. floating around out there. And you two have experience. Not only do you and Sam have experience, y'all both have been, you know, great executives. Sam was coach of the year. Mm -hmm. You both know Minnesota. You both know the franchise, everything else. I'm just throwing it out there. I think you're a good team going back to Minnesota, working with some of those young guys that y'all have helped to mentor, so forth and so on. I, I just got scared of you. I just had KG that that together, Squeed, yeah. Cassell. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's been We there. had to try to beat those guys. Yeah, so when you talk about experience and making it work and everything else, I mean, he and Sam Mitchell, to me, that's a good look in Minnesota. Yeah. I tell you what, Sam would be a great hire for them. I really do. I'm not sure. You're not that. running for all that. No, 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 no. He's like, I'm not ready no, to no, announce. No, hey, hey, Chris, you, you ain't, you ain't yeah. even in this yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. I think so he should. Yeah, this, this is just me and you talking about it. Because work with the yeah. big fella. He had yeah. black. You he, know he's tough. They say they're lacking toughness. Wiggins on that wing. Phoenix now. I mean, you saw him come back from 3-1 that time against Houston. I mean, I'm sorry, against the Clippers. But that was him. That was his team. And he's the part guard to play. Yeah, he drafted Garnett. Oh, okay. And also made the the area conducive to raise up a young guy like that. Is he from Minnesota? Is Mikael from yeah, he played, did he play at Minnesota, Big Ten guy? Oh, yeah, he won championships with the Celtics? Uh, did he? A couple. <laughs> he said that 86 team was the greatest you'd ever seen. And he's got experience? Yeah. He knows from... Uh, he oh, likes, wait, we're not in the commercial oh, right oh, now. Oh, my, hey, my, hey, my, hey, my, hey, my, He likes the sunshine of Scottsdale. Oh, 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 there you go, there you go. Oh, man, but yeah, so we do have another team that, that's going to be playing <laughs> OKC. We'll talk about them uh, a, a little bit later, and I think most teams will be really surprised with the way that OKC is playing, especially on the defensive end. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your steel leaders for this year in the NBA start with Westbrook at number one, number two, PG-13. We'll talk about him on the other side. Players only, baby. And Coaches you know only. that. Coaches only. <laughs> K.L. Sam Mitchell. <laughs> Sound like a good fit to me. Just bring the sun. Just bring the sunshine. He's 13. Let's talk more about it. What's at stake here? Brian Geltzeiler, we talked about the Warriors side with 3D. Let's talk about the Knicks side here. These two teams going in opposite directions. 
Kelsey, this is quite the um, job decision when you've got two different jobs and you pick one over the other. Steve Kerr may be the biggest genius ever. Yeah, I mean, listen, if the Knicks had honored their contract offer to him in the first place, he'd probably be there instead of the Warriors, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Here's the reality. Players matter, Jared, and Golden State had him, and the Knicks didn't. Now, I think the Knicks would be further along if Kerr went there. He was going to have some personnel power with that organization and certainly would probably have them in a better situation than they are now. Nonetheless, the Phil Jackson, and Phil Jackson would have been a lot less involved in what went on if Kerr ended up taking that coaching job and he would have had a lot of say in personnel. So it went in a different direction for the Knicks, but the Knicks have finally are starting to get this right. Listen, Porzingis is out uh, for the foreseeable future right now. We don't know when he's going to be back, but they are evaluating young talent and young players. They're finding out that Kevin Knox can play. They, they, they pretty much picked Noah Vonley off a scrap heap. He's been terrific for him. Emmanuel Moutier is finally fulfilling some of that promise that so many people, like me, thought that he had. So the Knicks are doing this the right way. They're going to get another lottery pick, hopefully for them a high lottery pick, yep. but they're finally going through the painful rebuild they were never willing to go through up till now. Kelsey, let's talk more about Porzingis. Number one, do you expect him to play this season? And if the Knicks are indeed quote-unquote tanking, why would they want to bring him back? Plus, you've got the whole restricted free agency situation with Porzingis coming up this summer since they didn't come to an agreement prior to the year. To me, this Porzingis situation is pretty simple, Jared. Do not play him this year. Just let him sit the entire year. Let him get a full summer underneath his belt. Come back fresh next season. As far as the restricted free agency is concerned, the Knicks have one choice and one choice only, and they better not get cute. Offer him the full max from the jump and bring him back. Listen, the Knicks are in a unique situation. They're one of the worst teams in the league, yet all we hear is their name mentioned for some of the major free agents that are out there, whether it's Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler. The Knicks' name has been prominent. Chris Stapps Porzingis matters a lot in all that. Make sure you have him locked up there for the long term. Make sure he's totally healthy when the season starts. He's a really nice recruiting tool for you because he's got a ton of ability. Nothing to prove to bring him back this year, not even a little bit. They know who he is when he's healthy, and they're going to have to roll the dice that he is healthy and give him all that money, every dime of the max, Jared. Okay, Delty, let's go to 10 before tip number three. It's what's at stake. First player's only game on the NBA TV doubleheader. Head coach Ryan Saunders coaches his, coaches his first game as the Timberwolves interim head coach in a hostile environment, to say the least, in Oklahoma City. What can we expect here from a 32-year-old first-time head coach, Ryan Saunders, guiding the Timberwolves? He's going to start here as the anti-Tom Thibodeau, Jared. He's going to try to keep things light, keep things a little bit more fun. For a Timberwolves group that we don't know where their work ethic is and Tom really had to push them, I don't know if that's the best thing for them in the long term, but we'll probably see a spirited performance out of them this evening, I would think, in the fact that Tom didn't exactly engender a whole lot of support among players on that roster. Only his Timber Bulls were the guys that he really had in his corner. So I would think tonight we're going to see a refreshed look out of some of the young guys on the Timberwolves. Timberwolves, so we're going to be happy to not have Thibodeau there anymore. All right, this Minnesota team has won two in a row. They are in the 11th spot in the West, but they've got a lot of teams to leapfrog. Do you have any realistic expectations of Minnesota making it back to the playoffs for the second straight year after the 14-year drought? I don't, just because when I look at who's in the playoffs right now in the Western Conference, it's hard for me to envision more than one team there dropping out. And I do think the team that's going to manage to claw their way in that's out right now is the Utah Jazz. So I don't know that the Timberwolves are going to make the playoffs either way. I think you had to expect a step back with having the Butler trade. And this has been a step back. I mean, we can debate the Thibodeau thing till we're blue in the face. I'm not sure it was the right call. Nonetheless, I don't think this particular coaching move and bringing in Ryan Saunders with not a lot of experience is going to be something that catapults them into a very tough Western Conference playoff situation. All right, Kelsey, yeah, as I was explaining, it'll be tough here for Minnesota in the 11th spot. Only two games back of the Lakers in the loss column. But again, you've got Utah, Sacramento, and you wonder if the Pelicans are going to get back into this mix after they've been playing really good basketball of late. Meanwhile, the team they're going to play tonight, Oklahoma City, coming off the loss but still playing really good basketball, the best defensive team by all measures in the NBA right now. But who's the best player on the Thunder right now? Russell Westbrook. 
They go like Russell Westbrook goes. And I know Paul George is having an outstanding season right now. But the reason he's been able to have that good a season is because of the changes Westbrook has made to his game. I, I don't want to put it in these terms because it almost sounds like Westbrook has too much power on this team. But George is doing this because Russ is allowing him to do this, Jared. He's getting the ball in those spots. He's letting him take big shots at the end of games. He's being deferential in the right spots and not deferential in the right spots. Westbrook has evolved and matured in a very unique way. He still has all the ability he's always had, but he's allowed Paul George to be the guy that he's been this year. The other thing about this team, no overhang with who's going to stay, who's going to go next year. They know this group's going to be together a while, but no doubt in my mind, Westbrook's still the best player on the Oklahoma City Thunder, still the straw that stirs their drink. Delty from Sirius XM NBA Radio, plenty more to do with you. Now, Temple Four Tip number four, it's what's buzzing today around the NBA. No love, at least no love anytime soon. Kevin Love says he is still weeks away from returning from the toe injury that has kept him out since the second week of the season. Love says that once he is healthy, he wants to get back on the floor with his guys. But the question now is, will those guys be the Cavs? Love's contract becomes eligible to be traded on January 24th. The New York Times is reporting within the last hour that the NBA will launch an official investigation into the signing and near immediate relief release of restricted free agent Patrick McCall. We'll talk more about Patrick McCall's situation with Gelty coming up in our next segment. I feel like I'm the best player in the game. Not me. Anthony Davis saying that to Joe Varden of The Athletic. Then he went out last night absolutely bald. 36 points and 13 rebounds as the Pels now have won four of six. Real and not so spectacular. The Ringers' Kevin O'Connor reporting that Jimmy Butler's problems with the Sixers' offensive system are real. Butler's back tonight after missing the last two with an illness. The Sixers host Washington. Coming up on Temple Four Tip, we got plenty more to do, including a busy night around the association. Get you set for Kawhi back in the lineup with Kyle Lowry, but Danny Green is out, so Van Vliet stays in the lineup. We've got players only doubleheader. Minnesota taking on Oklahoma City, followed by the Knicks and the Warriors, all right here on NBA TV tonight. We come back and talk with Delty about the great Vince Carter possibly playing north of the border for the first to the last time ever. Is he the greatest Raptor ever though? We'll answer that question next.